What you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you got a bunny one a, a bunny suit a bunny onesie yeah it's really comfy too like feel this it's it's just it's really it's it's it's, it's soft that's pretty soft Taking it from the top here, we're gonna go ahead and go over every character. Take a look at their move sets. Of course, some of these characters we're already very, very, very familiar with, but some of these we're not. But I still wanna go through every single one of them because, you know, gotta pass the time somehow, you know. Gran, starting with this mother Pfeiffer. Mostly I wanna take a look at the skills, of course. And this one we can kind of skim over because we've seen it a million billion times of streams and betas and demos uh across the things and all that good stuff for the most part projectile super tatsu or a kick special power raise tempest blade a uh, unique action which is basically his drive you can consider that his drive but you can and you can get a uh, actual freaking this website is actually really good it gives you a whole explanation as to what power raise is charges before release of a slash attack it can go up to five levels, all that good stuff. So Tempest Blade and Catastrophe, Skybound Art, Super Skybound Art, pretty cool stuff. Catalina, we all know about Catalina and her amazing prowess as a strong female character. Frozen Blade Projectile, extremely good. El Emerald Sword, which is her DP. Enchanted Lands, a lunge, of course. Uh, light wall which is her unique action light wall is super sick because this is similar to an fadc and what i differentiate good katarinas from the bad katarinas is their usage of light wall that is 100 percent what determines a good katarina player in my opinion you can use her pokes you can use her special moves but this is what i think diff is going to differentiate katarina players after that skybound art blades of frost you got realm of ice ice scudinid freaking they're so good man these, all these animations are fantastic. Yeah, we know about Catalina, though. Charlotta. Charlotta is a character I feel like we have to explore a little bit more. She was one of the least explored characters in the beta, in my opinion, and just in general as of right now. But, of course, now that we have new characters, that's no longer the case. Shining Onslaught. Rolling, rolling, rolling barrel. Yeah, you got... <laughs> yeah, Charlotta emotes. There you go. You can have all sorts of Charlotta emotes in the chat. <laughs> Uh, Holy Ladder, which is a flash kick type attack. It's a DP. Short of, sort of Lumiel, which is a flurry attack. Leaves him standing, not lock, not knock, knock down. Uh, Noble Strategy, which is a hop. It's like Demon Flip from Street Fighter. And then she's got a couple options. If you press A, then you, she's got a low. And with Surus Strike, I like that. And then with a B version, she goes mid. It's an, oh, I, I'm sorry, an overhead. No, that's not an overhead. That's just basically just her coming down. Uh, and then the C is that's an overhead for sure. And then with sweetest skills, this is a command grab. This basically she sits on your face and she command grabs you. Uh, unique action is going to be a parry, which is really, really, really cool. It's just a parry, <laughs> pretty much. Skybound art, rolling, rolling barrel, rolling down the river. Noble's execution, Excalibur. It's pretty dope. <clears throat> no, she's a charge character. She's a charge character for sure. But this is not a charge move. I don't no this this one's not a charge move. Well, I guess you can consider none of these charge moves, but you know the is they're they're pretty good. Next up, we got Lancelot. Lancelot speaking of rushdown characters, this character is really 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 fun to use just because he's all over the place and he has different ways to be able to get around the screen with Verbal Wind, which is his unique action, which is cool. Uh Wogenstrom Wogenstrom Wogenstrom. Man, these the names of these moves are crazy, man. Wogenstrom, it's a projectile, really good. Blade Impulse, it's a lunge attack. And then we got Southern Cross, which is his Rekkas. His Rekkas are really good for staggering as well. And Turbulence, which is uh, his DP. Consider his DP because it's invincible, but it's basically a teleport, which you can decide whether or not to strike down or not to strike down. Uh, Wurble Wind, which is his unique action. This is where he gets to kind of, you can choose the direction of where you can move very fast across the screen so it's like a similar to a teleport but it's not a teleport it's basically just like a command dash that you can go anywhere 
any eight directions. Really, really good. You can get some mix-ups going. Weissflugel, which is his super Skybound art, and then Schoner Winterhugel. Schoner Winterhugel. <laughs> what the crap? Uh, I didn't know this guy was German either, but I guess he is. So, yeah, uh, Lancelot, rushdown character, super freaking good. Percival is a freaking man, dude. This guy is something else. I played him, of course, during Evo and during Arc Revo. Character is incredibly fun, and he does so much damage. On Zo uh, uh, same thing, freaking, we got German names? I guess so. On Zuden, I don't even know how the hell you can say it. On Zuden, uh, which is basically his projectile. It's like Gunflame, and it gets enhanced if you... It goes full screen if you if you get a, a uh, install. Uh, Platzen, which is his DP. His EX DP actually goes forward, and it kind of like turns into a shoulder tackle into an uh, uppercut, similar to like Palebringer. Lord Strike, which is a command dash, and he can do a few things out of his command dash. We got Schneiden. Which is a, I think, I'm pretty sure this is a low. After that, we got Mox, which is an overhead. No, th I'm sorry. Th this is not an overhead, but it looks like an overhead strike. It's not an overhead. However, it's hella, hella, hella plus. Very plus. So if you get hit by this, don't press any buttons, especially the EX version. The EX version is the one that's plus. Uh, Zoraizen. It's his mid attack, so it's basically it's like a stab attack, and this is the the attack where if you're installed and you get the confirm, go for this move because it does a freaking asinine ton of damage. Uh, after that, you got uh, Thrumure. I don't even know how the hell this is, you can say that. Um, it's basically how you install. So if you press like down down, it's down down bait. That's the motion. So if you press the light version, it's one orb. The medium version is three orbs, and then, of course, the EX version is five orbs. And the EX version is the fastest, while the medium version is the slowest, but you gain three. Yeah, you know you know what I mean. Unique action, which is his command grab, and you can combo off of it. It's very close proximity, so you have to be incredibly close to be able to do it. But it's a command grab. You can combo off of it. This kind of goes alongside with Mox, which is his plus the move that's plus on block. And, yeah, so you can basically just, like... Keep harassing them with like 2A, or you can do a command grab. That's pretty cool. Low and Wolf, which is Skybound art. Super Skybound art. This Super Skybound art is really, really cool. After that, Fairy, this is the character I'm most familiar with because it's the one that I played with the most in the beta. Uh, against Benst, uh, this is her whip command grab, but it's a blockable uh, It's a bo blockable command grab. So it's not necessarily a command grab, but uh, yeah, it's a head grab. That's what it is. So, Gespenst, you can do a couple things out of it. You can either bring them in by saying heal. You basically pull them in, whip it good, <laughs> which is a funny name. You basically explode them on sight. You grab them once you hit them with the whip with Gespenst. That's when you can blow it up there. You've seen it many, many times. So you have two choices once you get the the the, the whip. After that, you got Beppo. And Beppo is a good boy. I love Beppo. Beppo is his, her DP. Pretty good. Uh, Trombe. Which uh, Trombe, which is her, it's like a multi-hitting attack that builds a lot of meter. It's safe at certain distances and, and under certain circumstances. And also it has a lot of knockback uh, and pushback on block too. So it's a great move to use overall. Plus it does a lot of chip too. After that, you have Gigi. Gigi, of course, is, this is the, this is the, uh, the thing that, is going to make people hate Fairy because this is basically a set play tool. You set out GG, you make them block while Fairy runs around. Love me some GG. After that, you got the unique action, which is basically like, this is like a weird move. It's not necessarily super great, but it's just like a move where she twirls her whip and it's like a quarter of the screen. It's, it's all right. The better unique skills... Oh, I guess it does a lot of chip damage. You're right. So this right here, it says, whoops. This right here, you can't really see it because of my face cam, but it says that it does a, quite a bit of chip damage, and it's true. It does. After that, you got Spectral Dive, and this is probably uh, her better unique skill or unique action because she can basically do a dive kick, and you can adjust or you can go different trajectories depending on what direction you, pit, you, you pick when you press the D button. So this is really good. You can get out of corners. You can 
kind of you, you can basically use this as a dive kick so at a specific angle you can actually make it plus just like any other dive kick and all that good stuff after that's ghost swing it's like a, a spencer george of the jungle swing i really haven't found too much usage for this but it's whatever uh skybound art this is an, a, a great skybound art which is the ball skybound art it's great because you can basically set out uh send out a ball and you can move around it does a ton of chip damage and you just can basically just ruin your entire opponent's day if they block this this move either that or you just if you get hit by it that's even worse <laughs> if you get hit by this it's even worse let me tell you after that, her second Skybound art, yes, she has two Skybound arts. Hin Inrichten, which is a install super. Her install super basically lets her rebeat any single direction. It's pretty cheap. I think it is, at least. Because you have different things like she can do like JC into dive kick. You can you can like rebeat uh, like 2B into 2A. There's so many different things you can do with this Skybound art. The only thing is, is of course, you can't use other Skybound arts while you're there, and you can't use EXs while you are in install, because whenever you use a Skybound art, all your special moves go into cooldown, so you can't use special moves too often, not until when they actually come back. After that, Super Skybound art, it's super sick. It's basically armpit, uh, armpit fetish, the super uh skills don't go on cooldown anymore oh that's really good then okay okay i didn't know that i didn't know that so that's been changed that's great i didn't notice that in when i went to go play the newer build uh but i do know that they make did make some changes and next up is lowane now lowane is one of the characters that i'm very very not familiar with <laughs> at all so we're going to be going through all of these together sammy and tommy which i'm imagining are his two lackeys uh yo i think it's about time to hit up the boys pop a couple cold ones so i guess this is the projectile and i don't know what the motion is but of course there's one button skills the light version l sam slides with a low hitting attack tomo wait a minute sammy and tommy wait l sam tomoy oh what the hell dude that's their english names that's funny uh tommy so sam slides in for a low tommy jumps in and splashes on the foe so i'm guessing that's for neutral uh and then uh, you can call both of them at the same time damn that's pretty yeah you can definitely get some pretty interesting shenanigans you can send his goons in and it'll be similar to like jill for marvel versus capcom 2 where she sends in zombies and also like frank west where he sends in zombies as well that's gonna be interesting uh after that it's, it says come at me bro you want to see my skills, bro? Just try and hit me. It's a parry. I did not know that. It counters standing hits, counters low hits, counters everything but throws. Okay, so it's similar to like Geese from Tekken or from King of Fighters where you, depending on the strength of the button, you can counter different directions. So if it's just like a mid or an overhead or whatever, you press the light counter. Or if you press the triangle, I'm sorry, you press the, me the medium version, counters low hits. And then, of course, the circle counters everything. Uh, the entire body is a, a parry. So, but you can still throw them out of it. Uh, awesome sauce. <laughs> Advancing. What is this? So this is, I'm guessing, a wreck of some kind or some sort of a special move. I'm sure we'll see this in his trailer a little bit more once we know. Well, once we know what it is, then it'll make a lot more sense. But spread it on. He performs a quick slash with a fast recovery. Nice. So the light version has a slower startup. The triangle and the... Wait, has fast startup and extra attacks. Oh, cool. So he has an actual parry. I'm sorry, uh, a Rekka. And then the triangle EX version has fast recovery and can cause a wall bounce, which can lead into combos. So that's that. After that, we got the magnificent tool of destruction. My God. Oh, my God. Is that a Katarina tank? Damn, put her in BB tag. Blitz tank needs a friend. Dude, Cat's not some rust bucket airship. She's an ultra hyper, hyper weapon. Summons Lady Caterpillar into battle. <laughs> That's weird, man. So he has different, not just Tommy, not just Sammy, but she's got Katarina, a.k.a. Lady Cat Caterpillar. Get it? So if you press the light version, it's Rocket Punch. I don't know how it looks like. Hopefully we'll see it in the trailer. 
And I don't remember it from his reveal trailer. Aether Beam, which I'm guessing this is what it is. It's freaking just a laser beam that shoots upward. And full barrage, I need to know what that means. But it seems pretty funny. Unique action, don't mind if I do, which is basically his an item. Random item. So I guess it's not necessarily random item, but it's more just an item that'll that'll restore health or meter, which I'm guessing I don't know how that's going to work, like in terms of how often you can use it or how much recovery there is or how much startup there is. So, yeah, we'll see. Skybound art. What do we got? Human pyramid attack. It's time for our ultimate form, bro fams. Bro fams. This character's too much, dude. Dudes, let's get on it. Three, two, one. Unleashes the final form of the Luwain brothers. HPA complete the, with only the most totally killer attacks. Who needs to block? Damn. So is that is this like a form that you actually get to control? Or is this like an actual super where they just go nuts? And you have to try and block these guys. Who needs to block? So, yeah, that's what I'm mostly interested in you control them okay that we'll see that a little more in his trailer and i imagine it looked like you could trade you can do that oh here we go oh never mind here we go skybound art a eh? bro fams time to let her rip we can only move back and forth now but our speed is unparalleled so it's time to rush that sucker down all right so i'm guessing this is some sort of a scurry attack like scurry 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 scurry, scurry. like that type of attack so that's cool I don't know if it hits low. It doesn't really say anything, but I'm pretty sure that's just how they move, I imagine. Totally rad juke. We can't let them ne negative vibes get to you, right? Dodge is incoming attack from the foe. The bros can't block while in HPA, so use this skill to avoid taking damage. So they can't block at all, so they have this. What the hell face is this? They have to basically rely on dodging and moving back and forth to be able to not get hit. Interesting. Great. It's similar to, dude, this is like Grand Blue Fantasy's version of Furin Kazan, dude. There better be some dope AF Furin Kazan Lowane combos if we actually, if this is what it says it is. Uh, it's lit, bros. <laughs> what the hell, man? Woo, woo. With freaking zeros instead of O's. God damn, this guy's as freaking zoomer as they come. Performs a three hit flurry of slashes. This skill deals a considerable amount of chip damage when blocked. And I imagine vice versa when they're when they're hit. Wow. So there's there's some benefit to be able to use this skybound art because you can either dish out a lot of chip or dish out some damage and just be completely just unga bunga. But I wonder what happens when they get hit. That's what I want to know. Uh the unique skill or unique art. So we got light them up. Oh my god. Ignites fireworks up towards the sky. The skill does not have horizontal reach, but easily catches the foe trying to jump in. Damn. Straight up anti-air with fireworks. Light them up. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Flex on them. <laughs> Running from us is totally not rad. Performs an overhead attack much faster than the standard overhead attack. It's a handy skill to catch crouching foes off guard. So you can't be blocking forever because he actually has a legit overhead. This character becomes a legit like fighting game character. So you got to chill out, my boys. With the blocks, you know? Stop spamming block. After that, we got catch him slipping. Like, like just block. It ain't that difficult. This guy is like, I love him, but he's triggering me at the same time. Like, shut the hell up, Lewin. <laughs> Performs a low sliding attack that sends the foe flying high. The skill can be followed up with attacks upon connecting. Use it right after a flex on him to mix up the standing opponent. So basically, you can go overhead low, low overhead possibly. You could probably do low into fireworks and start doing some gnarly combos. So yeah, this is basically Furin Kazan, the, the character. Just block, bro. Super Skybound RG. So advancing. This is another special move. Doesn't really say how you what the motions are. So we'll figure that out when we actually get the game. Moment of truth is upon us, my dudes. What is this guy, an Alex player? Perform a powerful rush attack that can be canceled from any skill using the HPA mode. It also, it'll also also disband the pyramid. So this is the combo ender and the skybound art ender. I imagine it can do a lot of damage if it's the ender. All right, after that, 
Super Skybound Art, another formation or another super where you get to have a like something alongside Lowain. So this one, he actually summons freaking whole Yggdrasil. He actually summons a ginormous... <coughs> um, What's her name? What 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 the crap is she? Uh, Primal Beast. And holy crap. <laughs> All right. So she's totally cute. Kitty summons Yggdrasil into battle in place of Lewain. While she does not take damage, she can't be knocked out. Okay. Her scales deal big damage at just about any range. So give her a call when it's about time to finish her foe. What I'm wondering is, does her health bar get incorporated with Lowain's health bar? Or does she have her own dedicated health bar? Because if she has her own dedicated health bar, that's freaking busted. It's linked with Lowain's health bar. Thank you. I imagine it's in the trailer or somebody confirmed it while watching matches from Team Spooky's channel. Uh, anyway, so what do you do when you summon Yggdrasil? Earth Pillar, which erects... Erects? Erect. Erect. Erects three rock pillars from the ground. Their placement can be adjusted by holding ba forward or backwards when pressing the button. So there's the first one. I wonder if it's like a... It doesn't say it's a low, so I don't think it is. Axis Mundi. Projectile. Fires a homing projectile from above. The startup before it release can be extended by holding down the button. Damn. Holy crap, Ola. So you got projectiles coming from, from above, huh? Homing projectile. I'm sorry. What the hell? Nether veil? Carpets the ground in lava. The entire ground in lava. Although this skill has a slow startup, it deals unblockable damage to the foe. It can be used to limit the foe's mobility or extra damage during a blocked axis mundi. Wow. Okay. I'm. I need to see these in action because these can be really good. On paper, it's looking like Lowain is kind of like really freaking good. But, you know, things on paper and things in, uh, on screen are two different things. This is a projectile. Generates a massive column that pulls the, the foe in and hits multiple times. Even if the skill is blocked successfully, it still deals a plenty, plenty of chip damage. So basically, this is going to be a chip damage galore. So you get to fight against Yggdrasil, and it's going to be freaking stupid. I 100% think that this character on paper is kind of freaking messed up. But like I said, I can't do, I can't judge anything until I see it or I play it. Next up, we got Ladiva. Oh boy, Ladiva. Actually, let's go ahead and read her thing. This draft duelist is the Star Jewel Resort Casino Liner in the arena and out. She's a pure headed, compassionate, and loving in every sense of the word. Her devotion to her fans and formidable strength make her make for powerhouse performances sure to captivate any audience ladiva's pretty freaking awesome i like me some ladiva what the hell is this what happened to her second skill there it is oh i didn't want to see that so jewel resort screwdriver command throw basically your tip of the run of the mill uh power bomb um the scale has longer reach deals more damage than normal throws try using it at close range when the photo is blocking command grab run of the mill after that we got midair command throw so is this one of the... Uh, it's basically an air command grab. The skill has longer reach and deals more damage than mi normal midair throws. Be ready to use it when the, the foe looks like they're about to jump. Yeah, this is definitely similar. It's like Mika's um, like air command grab where you can anti-air them with it. So that's cool. Headbutt of love. <laughs> of love. <laughs> Uh, performs a headbutt attack that can also negate projectiles. Dude, this is just like Zangief's headbutt attack. What the hell? Dude, this is Zangief. But, you know, she has a air command grab and he doesn't. Well, like, a you know what I mean. Um, okay, so we got the medium version, which is slower startup but has faster recovery, even if blocked. And then the EX version, faster startup and allows for a follow-up attack. All right, so you got all sorts of different ways to be able... I wonder if she can do, like, EX Headbutt of Love into Command Grab or something. I wonder how the Oki is on the Command Grabs. I don't know. Elegant Lariat. Advancing. Yeah, this is just a normal Lariat that I'm guessing she runs at you, and she freaking Lariats the crap out of you. Performs a Lariat attack that causes Guard Crush on blocking standing foes. Nice. So can you crouch this, does that mean? Oh, I wonder if you can. 
Uh, this skill has faster startup when performed while dashing, so it's handy for closing in on your opponent. Wait a minute. Has faster startup when performed while dashing, which means that she has a, a set startup uh, startup speed when done raw. But if you're dashing, like actually like either running at them, and you do this move, it comes out faster, which is pretty cool. I like when they do little things like that. After that, we got Devoted Body Slam. Command throw. Throws midair foes from the ground. Ladiva can't grab standing foes, but will grab any foes within range. This skill can also be grabbed, can be used to grab midair foes and hit stun. So try using it after connecting an anti-air attack. Damn, dude. <laughs> Damn, dude. All right. So midair command throw that you can, uh, you can combo people with. Love Grapple. It's a unique action. So this is her, her unique. It's a command throw, throw as well. Advances forward what before grabbing. Okay, so it's similar to like Broly's 6H. Or like uh, like Zangief's like running grab. Maybe it's similar to that. This skill has relatively slow startup, but it's more effective to be used from a distance rather than at a close range. So yeah, it's similar to that. Oh man, so many similarities to Zangief. Holy crap. Unique action A, and then a couple of things that you can do after you grab them with the unique action. After that, you can throw your opponent upward. <laughs> Damn. Or you can throw them forward. <laughs> Both versions can be followed up by any additional attack. So I'm wondering if you toss them forward, they wall bounce. And if you toss them upward, you can just combo off of it, just like how he is right now. So that's pretty cool. After that, we got the... I'm guessing another unique action. No, this is what Skybound art. Oh, she's got two Skybound arts. What the hell? Performs a powerful lariat attack followed by a drop kick attack upon connecting. Ladiva gains temporary invincibility during startup. So this is invincible. This skill's long reach and invincibility makes it deal for ideal for interpret and inter intercepting projectiles. It's a projectile invincible strike super. Which is cool. Which is cool. Lots of love, lots of hearts. I like it. She's like a better version of heart, I know. I'm not going to lie. After that, we got the throw, command grab. Which this is the one that uh, you're going to get the reactions. You're going to get the whole La Diva performs all supers on all characters or something. Uh, it's a command throw, though. It's invincible, too. What? Power, performs a powerful suplex attack that has longer reach and deals more damage than normal throws. This skill has immediate startup, so it's I'm guessing it's zero frame. We haven't had to deal with a command grab in Grand Blue Fantasy versus yet. So it looks like they're going with the the routes that hey, listen, the command grabs, yeah, they're kind of fast. So you better uh start jumping. But jump correctly, because if you jump incorrectly, they'll still grab you. So there's that. Um, so use it in close range after closing in on the foe. Lovely. Command grabs. Super Skybound art. Possibly the best Super Skybound art in the entire game. I cannot wait to rate the supers in this game. I am so freaking excited to rate the supers in this game. I'm going to give all 10s. They're all, like, I cannot see any super being below a 9. Seriously. It's an invincible command grab. Super Sky Bunner. Performs a powerful suplex that has longer reach and deals more, much more damage than normal throws. This skill can be chained into, into from combos. So this is a, a hittable or comboable command grab, which means that you can still do your magic series into this, this command grab. It didn't mention that in the other Skybound art, so I imagine that one you cannot... You cannot combo off of it. Yeah, you cannot combo off of it. So, But this one, you can combo into it. Okay, after that, we got the character. The, the, the characters that, to be honest with you, alongside Fairy, these are the characters that are mostly interested in this entire game. Let's take a look at Metara. Metara. I need to know. Let me see her lore real quick. An Irun woman blessed with myriad talents. Chief among them to the... Chief among them, a chief among them, the abilities to wield a magic bow. There we go. I couldn't read for a second. Magic bow and to sustain flight com completely unaided. So with this bow, she can fly basically. This bow makes her OP. 
Uh, she once acted as a guardian for her home village, watching over an altar where a sinister force was enshrined. But she grew tired of the mundane regimen and abandoned her post. What a bitch. Now she wanders wherever the wind takes her. Her arrows are a reflection of this freedom, unhindered by any obstacle and sure to find their target. Once she sets her mind on a mark, there's nowhere to hide. So, yeah, basically, yeah, she's just said, hey, I'm kind of bored. I'm going to, you know, leave this village, leave my post and just do whatever the hell I want, which I, to be honest, I kind of like that. So uh, she's thoughty, but she's my thought, you know, she's definitely my thought. I like, I like, I like, I like this thought. So I'm, I'm a big fan of this thought and I'm going to play her a lot. So, yeah, uh, yeah, she's pretty, she's pretty cute. First skill we got is Starry Sky High, which is a projectile, standard projectile, just firing an arrow, just like that. Travels higher than a pr standard projectile, so it won't hit, cr hit crouching opponents at a distance. So you can crouch this projectile, but it's really, really fast, so that's why. But depending on the direction or the button that you press, you can fire a, a uh, lower shot, I'm sorry, a slower shot or a faster shot depending on the buttons that you press. So the light version, it's slower, and the medium version is faster. When used midair, Metara fires at a downward angle. So basically just at a 45-degree angle. And, yeah, that's pretty much that. I wonder what the EX one does. Huh. Maybe it doesn't. Have, she doesn't have an EX one. Next up, she has Starry Sky Low, which is her second projectile. To counteract with the crouchable projectile, you have a projectile that it hits low. Uh, it'll hit crouching uh, opponents, but they can easily jump over it. Uh, travels lower than standard projectiles. Actually, I don't know if it hits low because it doesn't specify here. So I am guessing that it does not hit low. It just travels low to the ground. So it'll hit crouching opponents, but they can easily jump over them. Of course. But that's, of course, to counteract. It's basically like Sagat Tiger Shots. F high Tiger Shots and low Tiger Shots. Uh, and same thing, you can fire a slower shot or a faster shot, depending on the button that you press. After that, we got the Great Fall, which is really cool. This reminds me of Hilda and her shower or her small clouds of, you know, sunny with a chance of meatballs, whatever showers you got. So uh, the Great Fall fires an arrow towards the sky, bursts into a shower of arrows. It's really good for Oki, I think. So when you end combos, you can basically set up the Great Fall. And that's when you can continue combos, which makes her possibly one of the most interesting characters in this game because it's similar to Gigi, but like it isn't. I don't know what other tools she has, but Gigi, ha I'm sorry, Fairy has like instant overheads. So that's what's cu I, I have, I'm curious about to see what Metara has. And I won't know until I actually play her. So anyways, the light version fires one close to Metara. And the triangle in the EX version fires further out horizontally. The initial error cannot be blocked by foes midair. Um, wait a minute. Hold on a sec. The initial arrow arrow cannot be blocked by foes midair. So base. So does that mean that the when she fires the initial arrow, it's unblockable, or it just does it just whiffs? I have to take a look at footage and take a look at for myself because this can mean a couple things. Because it cannot be blocked, that means it could whiff, or it could just be unblockable in the air when she fires it. Which would be really cool if it was, like, an arrow that you can't block in the air. But more than likely, it's you fire it off, and there's no hitbox on the initial error, uh, arrow that fires down. Um, anyways, after that, we got Ethereal Seal. This is a pretty cool one right here. Blows a kiss that flutters across the stage and bursting into damaging columns uh damaging column when triggered by following skills long range uh 5c crouching 5c overhead attack starry sky basically the projectiles or the great fall what this basically means is think of rachel's la labellium or yeah um and think of like the lightning strike that she produces once she can't activate on the spot, she has to throw a projectile or throw something out there. One of these moves to be able to activate that column of lightning. So that's pretty cool, I think. So you can probably do some pretty... I don't know how this can incorporate into combos or incorporate into neutral. 
but I want to use it just to see how it goes. All right, so Ethereal Seal is that. Zephyr, and this is a unique action. This is her small hop, so her hops, or command dashes or command hops, similar to like my, I think, but just doesn't have the follow-ups. So it's a maneuver skill. This is a good way to put it right here. Basically, if you hold backward back in, in the skill button, when pressing the button, she hops backwards. Uh, but if you do it regularly, she hops forward. Uh, this skill can be used midair to change Medra's jump trajectory. So this is going to be a slippery character. Slippery character. Super slippery. She's going to be hard to catch. Very, very much agile. So I'm excited to play this character. <laughs> Run away like crazy. Run away like crazy, ladies and gentlemen. But, you know, you got tools in this game to be able to counteract zoning, like uh, dodge rolls and spot dodges. So, yeah, she's got a maneuver skill. Skybound art. Dense caress. Ooh, dense caress. Oh, you hear that chat room? Caress. It's invincible. It's a super. It's a skybound art. Performs a powerful jumping somersault kick in the first... If the first strike connects, Meta will perform an enhanced version for increased damage. Try using it away uh, as a way out when stuck in a high-pressure situation. So it's basically saying, hey, wake up super. huh? How about it? Wake up super. It's always good. <laughs> They're promoting wake up supers. Holy crap. Um, so this is one of those supers that the full animation doesn't come out unless you get the first hit or that first strike. Uh, similar to like Katarina. So I'm guessing some combos might not work completely with her full version of the Skybound art, but we won't know until we try her. And then we got Super Skybound art. We got Rapid Pulverize. Launches a barrage of arrows. If this skill connects at close range, Metra will perform an enhanced version for increased damage. Same exact thing with her Super Skybound art. Since it covers a long range, it can be used to com as a combo finisher or a counter from afar. I need to take a look at the hit uh, animation for the initial hit of this super, of both these supers, to see how they, they are like. So, yeah, that's Metara. She seems to be a super fun character, I think. She's going to be not uh, super agile, super maneuver. Uh, ma uh, she's going to have a lot of maneuverability and uh, a lot of... Uh, runaway tactics because uh, she's going to fire projectiles she's going to fire showers butterflies all sorts of things man all sorts of things this is the character that everybody is horny for everybody's horny for zeta holy crap i did not expect so many people to be so horny for this character oh my god so this fearless fighter belongs to the society an organization which hunts primal beasts. She has performed. She has formed a contract with the seal weapon known as the Spear of Arvis. She and her partner Vasaraga, my boy, are charged by the society with a variety of missions. Though the two of them often butt but heads, each other has each other's complete trust. Perhaps it is, in it, uh, perhaps it is the contrast between Zeta's upbeat but stubborn personality and Vasaraga's unshakable calm which makes them such good partners. So they're basically buddy cops. They're, they're buddies, and I like that. Uh, in addition to the fierce mid-range spear attacks, which keeps her enemies at a distance, Zeta also has a talent for lightning quick art aerial combat. So basically, this character, let me tell you something. This character has the potential to be the best in the game, in my opinion, because she's got a lot of tools from what I've seen of the trailer, and I'll show you why in just a moment. At least one of the best in the game. Um, I, it's too early to say the best in the game, but this, this girl, you can definitely tell that she's going to be extremely strong when she comes out. All right. What are her skills? Infinite wonders. It's a projectile. It's a laser beam. She has one of these. Why? Generates a full screen beam that can neutralize projectiles. What? You can neutralize projectiles. What about my Gigi? <laughs> Anyways. Okay. It's a full screen beam. So you press the medium version. Um, so uh, press the medium that can be delayed by holding the button. So basically, you can hold down the special move and then move around, and then you can release the button and such, which is really cool. Uh, the EX version deals additional damage at close range. I imagine there's some sort of hitboxes around the the thing. So um, yeah, this seems to be a pretty good projectile. 
Uh, like seriously, like that's that's pretty good. Full screen beam that can nullify projectiles. That's, tell me that's not good. Uh, Spear of Arvis. This is a lunge attack. Can perform a rush attack that can be canceled into a follow up attack while in motion. So the light version, which is uh, the square, covers a short range, which is just like a half little 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 dinky strike. And then the medium version covers a long range. And then the EX version can be canceled into the two follow-up attacks. So you can get up to three uh, uh, Spear of Arvis attacks, uh, while the other ones can get just one, which is can make for some cool combos. I've seen some of the combos that she can do from the trailer, and it looks freaking gnarly, man. Uh, after that, we got Spear of Arvis Rise, which is... Uh, a rising attack that be co can be canceled into a follow-up attack while in motion. So it's similar to possibly a Rekka, or I think I think this is an upward uh, spear attack. I don't think it's a DP, though, because it doesn't say invincible. So it's an upwards DP attack that advances forward afterwards. So she can basically perform another Spear of Arvis going downward, I think. Oh, yeah, like right here. Like rises diagonally, rises vertically, and it can be canceled into two follow-up attacks. So you can do a couple freaking things after this, just like the other Spear of Arvis. Cool. So she has a vertical one, and she has a horizontal one. Wow. After that, she's got Spear of Arvis Fall. Wow. Performs a diving attack. So all of these can be correlated with each other, by the way. So you can go Spear of Arvis, Horizontal, and then Upward. Or if you want to do Upward into Downward. Or if you want to do Upward into Horizontal. Or if you want to do Downward into Horizontal. Or Downward into Upward. You can do all this stuff. It's kind of freaking nuts. So she can go everywhere with this these freaking Spear attacks. So she's the same thing, but she can go Downward. It's nuts. Nuts, man. Nuts. You got Rap City, which is... I don't know what this is. What is this? Gets in a defensive stance that defends against incoming attacks and can be canceled into various skills. So is this a parry as well? I think this might be a parry too, and you can cancel into specific attacks, which is cool because you can read the opponent and be like, ha, next you'll do a mid-attack. And then all of a sudden he does a mid-attack and you're like, I'm the best. So the light version defends against high attacks, and then the medium version defends against low attacks, and then the EX version, all attacks, just like the other parry from Loane. So there's that. Yeah, she's like Leo. You're right. Holy crap. It is like Leo. Is that you? <laughs> is that you, Leo? <laughs> Crimson Cleave, which is another attack, follows up after Rhapsody. Oh, this, these are the follow-ups after the, uh, the, the, the parry. So after this parry, you get this one. It follows up with a horizontal cleave attack. It has decent reach, but it can hardly... It can be a handy skill to keep the opponents at arm's length. Okay? So that's the first attack. The second attack is Rising Split. Follows up Rhapsody with a vertical slash attack. It has shorter reach than Crimson Cleave, but much faster startup. It can be a handy skill to use at a close or as an anti-air. So here's what I'm worrying about. Or, hold on. Does it have to can be canceled into various skills. Okay, so it has to parry for it to any of these moves to come out. Because I'm thinking, is it like Bikens then? Is it like Bikens parry where you go into a stance that can parry and you can actually perform moves out of this without actually having to parry anything? Uh, but I think you do have to parry something. So yeah, that's that one. Next up is Knee Assaults, which is the third follow-up, which is a knee, rising knee, tiger knee basically. Um, Zeta can perform midair attacks after jumping. It can be a handy skill to close the gap when going on the offensive. So that's really cool. <laughs> that's really cool. So it's similar to like the Chun Li V skill. If you don't know what Chun Li V skill is, it's when she leaps upward and then you can continue combos uh, because she recovers while in midair and the opponent is still in hit stun. So that's really cool. You can get some cool combos with that. After they got unique action. So this is one, something that I didn't think could get any weirder. Because Mai has this move. It's basically a flurry of attacks from her spear. And Mai could do this, but you have to mash a button. This one, you don't even have to mash a button. You just have to press a button. Uh, performs a multi-hit piercing attack. The skill can be extended for additional hits by pressing the rap button rapidly. So, it so use it to create some space between Zeta and the foe. So is this a good move to be able to like increase the gap between 
the opponent and yourself because that would be really good to end combos with unique action and have some chip damage and also have some distance to make it safe. That'd be really good. After we got Resolute Strike, which is a Skybound art. Yeah, Invincible and Advancing. It's like a forward lunging attack, fully invincible. Uh, when activated midair, Zeva dive, dives down diagonally. So she has the air version and the midair version. But the midair version goes down at an angle, and the grounded version goes at a horizontal. Uh, since the skill covers a long range, it can be used as a combo finisher from afar. Nice. And then we have Serious Roar, which is an invincible move. Of course, she signs her. It's like a weird gay bulge, which is it's she doesn't actually throw her spear, but she like summons a lightning bolt or a laser beam from it, and you get some a cool animation where she rips off her armor. Pretty much. So the, the attack is so powerful that her armor breaks. And you can see, um, you know, the thing that everybody wants to see whenever they see a female uh, fighter on the screen that has nothing covering her up. My boy Vasaraga. Great Scythe Grinoth. Let your soul shape my blade. Your soul shape my blade. I like it. I like. It. He's like Nightmare. He looks just like Nightmare. The Towering Draft Warrior belongs to, to, to the Society, an organization which hunts primal beasts. He has formed a contract. Uh, yeah, okay, that, that's the same as uh, uh, Zeta. His weapon is known as the Great Scythe Grinoth. Now, the intimidating size of his blade and his immunity to pain saps opponents of their will to fight. Though his somber bearing and curt speech can make him seem unapproachable, he is, in fact, a calm, kind person who will always go out of his way to help those in need. Oh. His indomitable spirit, raw physical might, and an inability to feel pain makes for an overwhelmingly, uh, overwhelmingly aggressive fighting style. Opponents are advised to approach with extreme caution. Basically, he's got super armor. Basically, this is Grand Blue Fantasy version uh, versus his version of Guts. This is Guts, but with a scythe. So, yeah, think about that. No pain, no gain. I'm just saying. We got Instinction. Instinction. It's a projectile that is right in front of him. Fires a ground projectile that travels about half the stage, causing significant knockback to the foe upon landing. And so the medium version and the EX version initiates the skill with a quick slash attack. So he's got one that is right in front of him and then multiple that travel across the screen. He's pretty freaking sick. I think it'll tell us if it has armor, by the way. Battalions of Fear. It charges forward with a tackling attack. Can be enhanced with Soul for Forge, which I'm guessing is some move uh, that we haven't been introduced to yet. When using technical inputs, this skill can also be charged while using back or up back. So, this character is a charge character. Sick. I'm down with that. So, it's a charging move that he moves forward. And, of course, Soul Forge. I don't know what exactly that is, but we'll probably learn in just a moment. Great Scythe Sinoth. Command throw. Grabs the opponent using the Grinoth and throws them. Grabs mid The medium version grabs midair foes, and then the EX version briefly slides forward and covers additional ground. Wow. So he has a regular command grab with Grinoth, and I'm wondering how much range it has because that has the potential to be really freaking good, too. Especially if he has armor with it, just like Broly does. Uh, after that, we got Savage Rampage. Goes into Savage Stance. While in this stance, Vasaraga can use a variety of unique follow-up attacks or Great Scythe Grinoth. Uh, when in this Rampage Stance, you got he takes a step back if you press the medium button. Or immediately begins marching forward. Oh my god! This, is, this character looks like he's going to be badass as hell, dude. I can't wait. It's gonna be like a horror character, like uh, like uh, what's uh, what's his face? Uh, not Freddy Krueger. Uh, Michael Myers just rushing at you. Oh man! Rising slash swings Grinoth in a high slash, hitting both standing and airborne airborne foes nearby. This skill does not hit crouching opponents, so you can crouch this move. But this is basically don't jump willy nilly. I'm gonna swing my scythe, and get, it's gonna hit you. After that, we got sweeping slash. Swings Grinoth in a slow sweep and a low sweep, knocking down any standing up foes nearby. The skill can be used to catch a foe attempting to backdash out of range. Good 
plan. So this is out of Savage Rampage, by the way. So you out of Savage Rampage, you can, of course, do Rising Slash, Sweeping Slash, or Crushing Strike, or Ravaging Stomp. Let's take a look. Uh, let's see. We got Swings Grinoth in a Vertical Downward Slash. Damn. Causing Guard Crush when fully charged. So you can actually freaking break someone's guard with this thing. And it's slow, and it probably has armor. Once the foe's opponent has been opened up, you use the opportunity to lay on the damage. Wait a minute. You can actually combo off of it? Whoa! All right. Sounds good, Vasaraga. This character's going to be sick, dude. I can't wait. Uh, Ravaging Stomp. We got Armored. Oh, this is the armor move. Never mind. Stomps on Grinoth, unleashing a damaging blast. This skill has armor properties, so use it to punish any foes attempting to attack Vasaraga during Savage Rampage. So... You got a couple things. You got something like they try to jump away, rising slash. They try to uh, just basically just walk backwards or backdash backwards, sweeping slash. You got something that will possibly, uh, they're, they're blocking in the corner or something. You can do crushing strike. If they you think they're going to mash on you, they're going to DP or something, ravaging stomp. Get armored, bitch. So he's got a lot of different options out of Savage Rampage. So I'm going to like this a lot, dude. After that, we got Soul Forge. This is what they were talking about earlier. His unique action. Activates an aura that gives armor. Ah, I see. This is what gives him armor. Properties for up to two hits when using any of the following skills or attacks. Charged attacks. Oh, oh, charged. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Charged EX attacks activate Soul Forge. So if you get an EX like Dash Strike or I'm sorry, uh, what's it called again? Battalion of Fear or Instinction. Oh, no, not, not Instinction. Which one? Uh, or maybe not. Maybe just Battalion of Fear. If you use that, you're freaking going to get some Soul Forge. Um, Battalions of Fear. Yeah, right here. Savage Rampage, including follow-up skills. That too, huh? Holy crap, man. Dude, this character is going to be nuts. He's going to be super unga bunga. I can't wait. Bloody Moon Skybound Art. Charges forward with a powerful advancing attack. It has invincibility properties. Great for punishing pokes and other attacks. Vasaraga will perform an enhanced version for increased damage if he performs it up close. Aftermath. Unleashes a massive vertical burst attack, sending any foes caught in it flying. Damage from attacks are temporarily nullified during the startup of the skill, making it effective at close range defensively and offensively. So it's got a freaking ton of armor. Ton of armor. So he's going to come at you no matter what until he hits something. Wondering how much <laughs> he's going to freaking do. Damn, man. All these characters are starting to be really, really awesome. So that's Vasaraga in a nutshell uh, for the most part. Seems like he's going to be a character that's going to be turn off your brain and let's swing this big scythe around. And I'm really happy about that because he's so sick. I love this character. So... One of the biggest concerns I had with all of these characters was basically just the lack of individuality and the lack of unique characters. We had a lot of characters here that were looking kind of just like samey in a way, but then they started releasing characters like Percival. Well, Percival was nothing. I didn't think he was anything too special. He looks like a mixture of like Gran and Catalina mixed with a little bit of Lancelot. So there's that. But then we had Lowain, which brings a unique flair to the roster. Also characters like Metera, who also has a lot of set plays similar to Fairy, but in a different way with more projectile and zoner-heavy uh, special moves, while Fairy has zoner-heavy normals and Gigi, of course. And she also has like 50-50s as, as well. Uh, and then we have Ladiva, which is a grappler. We haven't had to deal with grapplers at all. And she seems like she's going to be a pretty fast-moving uh, grappler as well. Then we have Zeta with large, ginormous buttons with good confirms, cool combos, great damage, and advancing moves that can close the gap in the neutral. Then we have Vasaraga, who's got armor on freaking everything. He's a savage, and he is just turn-your-brain-off fun and just be careful with this man because he will wreck your day with armor.